We're supposed to use Baha'i quotes as completely as possible in our teaching work and so on, but let's make an agreement, shall we? not to wait until we have every possible quote perfectly memorized for every situation that's going to arise. Let's just agree that because it's, it's impossible, right? It's not going to happen. We can have a few favorites, for example, that especially if they're meaningful to us, if they help us uh, work our daily life, then it, it's natural in conversation. And then we can, you know, slide it in easily. But to halt a conversation, wait, 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 I'm trying to remember that. It's just, you know, stops the conversation. However, there is the situation that we need to, I'm going off camera here. We, we do need to be deepening our knowledge in the Baha'i Faith, hopefully twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. And this handy little book I found because I wanted to recommend to the friends something that was easy to deepen on, okay? Because you could easily take 30 or 40 or 50 years just reading all the Baha'i books once, right? And so we need things available easily and quickly. This little book called The Ocean of Utterance, it's published in India. It has 95 different topics and short quotes on those topics. And it's a wide range of, you know, everything from respect to the power of the covenant to, you know, marriage, whatever. So different topics. So this is something that um, is a resource I want to um, mentioned to people, uh, concordances and compilations are others, um, meaningful tablets and prayers, all of these contain things that we could possibly take a few, just a few short quotes, and then of course, whatever's uh, in the Ruhi books. But short is better. Can you understand that? Can you see that? We don't want to just, you know, memorize a tablet of Ahmad and the first lead in just start launching into the whole 15 minute deal, right? That's way too long. But if we have a little, a little sentence that people are wandering in the paths of delusion, I have used that in conversation where, you know, somebody's going on about, gee, these people are so off track, they have no clue, and the whatever. And I'll say, you know, one of my Baha'i writings says that people are wandering in paths of delusion, bereft of discernment, to see God with their own eyes or hear His melody with their own ears. And they'll look at me and they'll go, wow, that's exactly what it is <laughs> on a spiritual level, right? So as long as it's natural for that conversation, right? And as long as we have the quote ready to go, and sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. All righty. So let me give you a few lead-ins, um, and you all are going to see whether you can make a bridge over into a spiritual, hopefully, Baha'i topic. Shall we? The game is on. I love playing games. So Brad and Angelina finally got married. And yes, they did finally get married. <laughs> you would say... I met a woman who's in a Baha'i acting couple. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. Good. All we need is a bridge, right? So Brad and Angelina, acting couple. You met a Baha'i acting, you know, half of a Baha'i. acting couple, right? What could be our bridge be? By, or, by acting couples? Is that what you Yeah. Mean? Speaking of acting couples, I met one recently. Right? Or something simple like that, right? Good. Power clap. Awesome. Anybody else? Brad and Angelina finally got married. I went to a wedding recently. It was a uh, Baha'i wedding. Fantastic. Baha'i wedding. What has that different from a regular wedding? Um, well, usually, like, most of the ones that I've been to, they write their own vows. But there's this one thing at the very end. It's like, uh, we will abide by the will of God, they say at the very end, is their Baha'i wedding vows. Wow, was that nice? That was awesome. Fantastic, good. So obviously acting couples, a marriage, you know, or Baha'i type of wedding. How about the institution of marriage? Do we believe in the institution of marriage? People shouldn't be living together and having sex before they're married, right, in the Baha'i faith. We have a very high moral standard. So the one bridge with that is, wow, that's nice. I believe that, you know, especially parents of children and, uh, you know, couples should be married. 
right? Something like that. I'm making that up as I go. But we can be listening while we're forming our words, right? Pray, help, right? <laughs> and form our words up. And by the time they're done saying what they're saying and we've found our tie-in, okay, then we should, you know, have something short and sweet that makes sense for the tone of the conversation. Make sense? Good, let's try another one. Uh, I can't find anything good on TV this season. All my, they canceled all my favorite shows. I'd probably just say, like, what were your favorite shows? See if any of the ones you mentioned popped up. Good. So just mention, you know, have them go on more, because you didn't find anything yet, right, to tie in with. See if they mention something that you could tie in with. Good. Anything else? Well, if you have nothing to do, you should come to Feast with me. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I love it. If you don't have any, so now that you don't have any TV to watch, come to a Baha'i event with me, right? Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Good. Power clap. Excellent for both of you. Anybody else? Nothing good on TV anymore. I canceled all my favorite shows. Good try reading a book. <laughs> there you go. Suggest a book. Yeah. You know, specific book. What is it? Abby. Abby Wise Away. You know, I've been watching a lot less TV lately since I ran across this really cool book, mm -hmm. Abby Wise Away. Maybe you want to hear about it, read it, right? This is steering conversations onto spiritual, hopefully, Baha'i levels. Make sense? It may feel like you're like hijacking the conversation. Guess what? That's not bad either, all right? We do want to be trying to, um, you know, uh, shepherd the conversation in a way that we can make use out of. Good. Um, so here are some good bridges, okay, some good universal bridges for you. As a Baha'i, I feel that, right? That's kind of a one size fits all. Now it may not fit your style, you may want to morph it, right, into something that feels more natural for you, but that's a, a starting idea. Another uh, is, um, because I'm a Baha'i, I really disagree with, or I really struggle with, all right? For something that you disagree with, or that's bad, or the, okay? Like the, you know, the, um, all the bad stuff in the world, right? Now, you can say that as a good, you know, lead in, or I'm gonna go the opposite direction lead in. So if somebody says, wow, the war and the something and the, you know, Norwegian Unabomber and then they're talking about, you know, evil and bad and, okay? And you can say, I agree, as a Baha'i, I'm really opposed to all that, right? I have, I'm really working for a different way in the world, something to that uh, end. Or you can use it like if somebody's saying, um, we want to legalize gambling in our state, right? or I'm gonna to go to the casino, or you know, something that we disagree with, right? Then we can say, as a Baha'i, I really have a problem with gambling. Does this make sense? So you can use that bridge either to agree or to disagree with whatever's happening. See where nothing, nothing can happen in a conversation that we can't use, right? It's like, as long as they don't leave, we're in good shape. <laughs> as long as we have some kind of practice. If you can hold on just a second. Um, Another bridge we can use is, because I'm a Baha'i, I'm interested in that. Or because I'm a Baha'i, I uh, would like to know more about that. You know, something like that, All right? Okay, your comment? Well, backbiting is the one I've struggled with for all well, my Baha'i life, is how to talk to people about backbiting when it's occurring. And I've finally gotten to the point where, you know, because people often come to me to consult with problems they're having and it usually involves problems with someone else. And so I finally got to the point where I can just very lovingly say to that individual, well, as a Baha'i, I believe that, you know, saying unkind things about other people is very unhealthy. So how can I assist you to solve this problem, but still 
not, you know, speak unkindly. And that is quite transforming in the conversation. And really, and people really appreciate hearing that because no one is telling people that biting is harmful. No one is saying mm -hmm. that. Right. In fact, the word gossip kind of has a fun connotation to it.